Okay. Ayan. I, I hope mapapalaki ko ito. Okay. Not sure talaga. Wait, F5. I'll not be discussing the history anymore. I'll just run through with my slide. Huh? Again, uh, I'll just give you introduction for our subject. No? Since this is pharmacology, basically, we will be talking about uh, all the substance, the merong effects sa ating system, um, chemical processes in the body, and um, itong mga chemical substances na ito will have interactions with the different substances also in our body and at the same time they will have intrinsic activity which means they will have their effect okay so we will be talking medical pharmacology um we will be studying those substances pero pili lang yung ating ano no yung ating matatapos since we lack time so yung mga binigay ko sa inyo na topics, yun lang din yung ating pag-uusapan. But most likely, we will not be really going deeper into toxicology. We will just have a little discussion on the toxic effects of those drugs. But I think we have a separate subject for that sa masters, yung sa toxicology. Okay? So again, um, run through lang ako with my slides. So uh, I believe since we are all pharmacists here, we know na yung principles natin talaga sa pharmacology, we, we will always believe na our drugs are toxic, whether they are synthesized in the laboratory or they are extracted like from our plants or we call them botanicals or mga herbal preparations. So again, they are all toxic uh, in contrary to the perception in the community na pag sinabing herbal preparations or, or they call it organic substances, wala na yun siyang mga toxic effects in the body. However, we have still the difference between our synthetic drugs and our botanicals in terms of the levels of their impurities. So basically, when you say botanicals, most of our food supplements in the market are manufactured manufactured just by drying the plant material and like placing the dried and pulverized like plant material inside a capsule and then that's it. So basically, whatever is in the plant material will be ano, taken by our... Um, Taujan patient. So, kung example, merong impurities doon na heavy metals, basically they will also receive the heavy metals. And uh, we know that heavy metals are considered as cumulative poisons. So, if accumulated in the body, and then as we are going to reach the toxic level, then the toxic effect will be manifested. Okay? Now, however... Um, all dietary supplements, the food supplements as we call them, and, and, and those substances that are promoted as health enhancing should also meet standards for efficacy and safety uh, as compared to that of the conventional drugs that we have. So again, they have their difference in their impurities, but we have to see to it that we also achieve and meet the standards met by the conventional drugs in the market. So, uh, as we study drugs, ito yung parang ano, magandang, magandang ano, research na topic nowadays, we have the pharmacogenomics, pero parang medyo mahirap siya, pero actually this one is a good topic for research, like pharmacogenomics or the pharmacogenetics. Like we study the genetic variations na that will cause the differences of the responses of the drugs among individuals or populations. So just like how they managed to design the dose of the isoniazids sa mga Caucasians and sa mga Asians. 
like they study that our genetic makeup that we are fast acetylators and the other race uh, are not fast meaning they are slow acetylators so they they made variations when it comes to the doses so again this one is a good topic for research now uh i think we also have biofarm in our master's na study but i'm not that sure wait lang ha if you send a message i cannot read the message ah hindi nagmo-move ang slide bakit hindi nagmo-move ang slide why wait lang and that's my problem since i don't know how to use the google meet wait lang. okay na Sige. Okay. Okay. Ayan, nag-move na siya. Sige. Uh, for the study of pharmacology, we always go back and at, and at the same time for the introduction, we always discuss the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics. So in our undergraduate studies, I think we can still remember that when you say pharmacokinetics, ano ito, what the body does to the drug. And we follow the Ladmerk principle, pero most of the time we discuss the ADME only. So anyway, we have the Ladmerk na, like we, ha we study also the liberation of the drug, the release of the active ingredient from its dosage form. And that would include studies on the disintegration and dissolution of the dosage form in the body before it gets absorbed in the blood circulation and then followed by the distribution. But we all know that, that during distribution, it's the blood who is responsible for the distribution of the drug to the target site or all over the body. And then after that, we have the metabolism uh, in which the liver is our ano, um, major site of, of metabolism because of the presence and at the same time, the liver is the one responsible para magproduce ng mga enzymes for metabolism. So, ang pinaka-importante dyan, we have the cytochrome P450 enzymes which are responsible for most of the metabolism processes of our drugs. So, like CYP2D6, which is uh, an important isozyme of our CYP450 group of enzymes that is responsible in metabolizing our antidepressant drug. So that is just an example. And then after that, uh, since the main purpose or the main goal of our metabolism is to make the drug more soluble, water soluble, I mean, to prepare it for excretion. So excretion na ang next gen. Pero if we can still remember, we have phases of our metabolism. We have the phase one metabolism, which is also called the functionalization um, reaction, wherein during that process, functional groups, polar functional groups are being attached to the original chemical structure of the drug, and that will render the drug water soluble. And then after that, here comes the phase two metabolism. We call that conjugation reaction, where small polar and yung mga ionized na mga small molecules are also attached to the metabolism product of the phase one reaction. We call them conjugates. Again, they are attached to the drug, actually not the drug, the metabolite fr coming from the phase one um process and then that would also that will also result to a metabolite that is more water soluble so examples we have the glucuronidation reaction and then we have the glutathione conjugation glucuronidation conjugation glutathione conjugation in mga examples though we have methylation methylation will not result to a more water soluble 
na metabolite. Instead, it will just make our drug um, inactive pharmacologically. So, yun yung examples of our phase 2. So, most of our drugs follow phase 1, then phase 2 metabolism. There are just exceptions like isoniazid. Isoniazid um, undergoes phase 2 metabolism first before it undergoes the phase 1. So, it will undergo acetylation first and then phase 1 na siya after. Before I forget, um, this is just a review, ha? So, phase 1, we have the oxidation reduction and the hydrolysis reactions. Those are examples of the processes we have for our phase 1 um, metabolism. Now, after that, we have the excretion process wherein the major organ for our excretion is our kidneys. Okay? So, basically... Diyan lahat na pupunta since diba, the aim of our metabolism is to make our drug more water-soluble and that um, it will be incorporated in the urine. Tapos, we also study pharmacodynamics. It's what the drug does to our body. So basically, we are talking about the mechanism of action of our drugs and that that's what we are going to study in pharmacology but we will also touch pharmacotherapeutics like uh how are we going to use these drugs these chemical substances to either prevent or treat diseases okay so just like i told you a while ago i'll just run through with my slide i will not be really giving I, I mean, yung ano na lecture talaga kasi introduction lang naman ito and at the same time parang review na lang before tayo mag-move on talaga with the different diseases and the drugs or conditions and then the drugs used for those conditions. Anyway, uh, a little review of the gen general principles of pharmacology. So again, we will be talking about drugs, but our drugs can be classified whether they are agonist or antagonist. So we just have to remember that when you say agonist, we have two requirements uh, to meet. Number one is the affinity so it's the ability of the drug to bind to the receptor. And then after that, we have the intrinsic activity, which is the uh, ability of the drug to elicit a pharmacologic action. However, in contrary, we have antagonist or we sometimes call them inhibitor uh, or blocker. Pero... They can have affinity in the receptor, so they are still able to bind to the receptor. However, unlike the agonist, they don't really have intrinsic activity. So they don't elicit pharmacologic action. So again, both of them has affinity to the receptor. So that's any molecule or substance in the body where our drug will interact. And as the drug interacts to that molecule, merong effect, merong changes sa function sa ating body. Okay, but not all drugs require a receptor for it to function. So some of them are called chemical antagonists wherein they will interact, interact directly to a certain chemical in the body uh, and then they will elicit the pharmacologic action for a certain condition. So one example of that is our antacid like they are just going to neutralize the gastric juice uh, for people with hyperacidity or with ulcer or yung merong, may, merong GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. So they don't really uh, require a receptor for them to uh, have an effect in the body. But most of our drugs do really have receptors in our body. So, wait lang. Run through lang ako neto. Nipili ko lang yung aking uh, i-discuss for the orientation. Kasi nabi ko na ito kanina. Okay. Stop presenting. Ah, yeah. That's 
Okay. It's not presenting it talaga. But anyway, talking about the receptors, um, I think 90% of our receptors in the body are proteins. And then the remaining are lipids or some are actually nucle nucleic acids. But nevertheless, um, majority of our receptors are protein so we have we also have orphan receptors in which until now we don't really know the ligand still so they are subject for research so you may uh, consider that one also but that will be an expensive one like um proving uh the, the ligand kung ano ba talaga ang nagbabind sa receptor na yan and ano yung magiging action. But nevertheless, it's a useful target for the development of our new drugs. Now, just uh, what I said a while ago, our proteins, uh, our receptors are proteins. Majority, majority of them are proteins. Some of them are regulatory proteins wherein uh, endogenous substances interact with with this regulatory proteins no, such as neurotransmitters our norepinephrine or even our hormones like epinephrine would bind to these regulatory proteins and then they will elicit the pharmacologic action now we also have enzymes enzymes can be good receptors also in the body so some of the enzymes are being activated but a lot of enzymes in the body are being inhibited by certain drugs like when we use methotrexate methotrexate can be used as a DMARD that's this is modifying anti-rheumatic drug or we can use that as an anti-cancer agent nevertheless uh, when it comes to the mechanism of action the drug will inhibit the dihydrofolate reductase. So that is an enzyme that can act as a receptor in the body. Now, aside from regulatory proteins and enzymes, our uh, we also have transport proteins that can act as receptors inside the body. So the best example for that is the sodium potassium ATPase, a pump that will regulate the exchange of the sodium and potassium in and out of the cell, but that is being inhibited by the digitalis glycoside or our digoxin. So again, that's still a protein, but it can act as a receptor also. And then we also have structural proteins um, na pwede ding mag-act as receptors. So like the tubulin in our microtubules during the, ano, during the mitosis, remember during the metaphase, the chromosomes will line in the met metaphase plate. And then after that, you have the anaphase, yung hahati na yung ating chromosomes and parang ipupul sila from one end and then yung iba doon sa kabilang end. So, the one that is responsible for that is the microtubule and then that is made up of the tubulin, which is also a protein and that has been the receptor of our colchicine, the drug we use as the drug of choice for our acute gout. But we also use that one for our chronic gout. So those are examples of, of proteins used as receptors. But um, receptors talaga natin, they are being classified into four. If you can still remember that, like we have the class one receptors. Uh, we call them ionotropic receptor. They are located in the cell membrane and then once activated, masyadong mabilis yung magiging effect nila. That will be in millisecond. So example of that is the nicotinic receptor, which is syempre the receptor of our nicotine, but actually uh, that is the receptor of our acetylcholine in our cholinergic na nervous system. Um, nicotinic receptor, if the ligand binds to it and it is activated, a, a channel will be opened. That is why it is called 
uh, ionotropic receptor because connected to the receptor is an ion channel. So for nicotinic receptor, uh, we have the sodium channel that will be opened. And then once na na-open yung sodium, so basically there will be sodium influx and that will lead to depolarization. So the inside of the cell will be more positive than the outside. And that would mean the cells will be excited. And that is the reason why um, when when a person, example, smokes, there will be stimulation of the central nervous system. So again, that's the class one. We call that a unotropic receptor, receptor that is due to the sodium channel, I mean the ion channels associated with the receptor. But the class 2 is called the metabotropic receptor, which is also found in the cell membrane. However, um, it's lower compared to our ionotropic receptor or yung class 1 natin. So ito yung mga receptors natin linked to the G proteins. Merong cascading effects yun siya. Uh, meron tayong different types of G proteins like the GS, GI, and the GQ. Yung GS natin, if being activated, it will activate also another enzyme like the adenylyl cyclase that will result in the production of another secondary messenger and that's what we call the CAMP, the cyclic adenosine monophosphate. So, I think, I don't know if you can still remember, but CAMP has a lot of action in the body. If we have a lot of CAMP in the body, uh, meron tayong effects like vasodilation or it can even trigger increase in our heart rate. So, meaning pag we have class 2 receptors being activated, G protein yung, yung nakalink sa kanya, hindi ions, ions yung sa class 1, pero merong cascading events that will lead to the production of secondary messengers. Yung class 3 receptor naman natin is what we call the enzyme-linked receptor. Uh, this time from the name itself, enzyme-linked. If you're going to activate the class 3 receptors, an enzyme will be activated. And most of the time, it's the tyrosine kinase. Pero medyo matagal yung magiging effect niyan compared to the other two receptors na nauna. So like for example, the insulin, the insulin binds to syempre the insulin receptor in the cells. Pero the, the receptor, the insulin receptor is under the class 3 receptor. So if insulin binds to that receptor, merong another enzyme na Na activate again it's the tyrosine kinase and then the tyrosine kinase um if activated will result to a cellular response so in that case that will be the opening and the facilitation of the movement of the glucose inside the cell since glucose is like um, naga undergo siya ng glycolysis in the cytoplasm. And then lastly, we have the class 4 receptors. Um, we call them intracellular receptors since they are located inside the body. So since they are located in the inside the cell, I mean, um, the effect will be medyo matagal. So some of them would take days before magkakaroon ng activity. So, one example of that is the tubulin which I mentioned a while ago. Uh, that is an example of a class 4 receptor. It's found inside the cell and it's a target of our cultricin and other anti-neoplastic drugs. So, yun yung mga receptors na mga drugs natin sa body. Uh, if you have questions, you may you may ask me huh? before I will I know, discuss the wait lang, autonomic nervous system. Wait lang, I'll open the 
the autonomic nervous system. I didn't want to discuss the autonomic nervous system para ready tayo sa ibang conditions after for our reporting. I, yeah, I'll give you a copy of my slide. Hala, bakit na na close day ako ang ano? Ano na close ba na siya? Biglang nag-close ang aking camera. Nga naman na. Medyo ko kami lumagamit aning Google Meet. Why? Hindi na pa ako nagsasalita. Close pala yung aking camera. Nawala din yung background. What happened? Nakita ang akong background. Wait lang ha. Sugot lang na siya. Ayan nga. Oh, something went wrong. Wala tayong magagawa sa something went wrong. Na-open na ba? Na-open na siya. Okay. Sige. I don't know if you can still remember. When we studied pharmacology in our undergraduate na course, um, we we always hear na pag na-master natin yung autonomic nervous system, studying other systems and other drugs for different conditions would be easier. So, let me have a review of this. Review ang tawag ko dito since tapos na tayo nito sa ating undergrad. So, mag-refresh lang tayo ng ating autonomic nervous system. So, this is our nervous system. This is divided into two, the peripheral and the central nervous system. So, when you say central nervous system, I believe we are very familiar that the brain and the spinal cord are the ones uh, involved here. Now, everything outside our brain and spinal cord will be under our peripheral nervous system. Uh, however, this is further divided into a lot of classifications. First, uh, we have the efferent and the afferent division. I think we have a mnemonics for this. The same, uh, same is sensory is afferent and motor is efferent. So, the afferent division is involved in all sensory neurons, like the neurons uh, involved in our five senses and would deliver message or signal uh, from the body going to the brain or the spinal cord and the brain. And then after that, we have the motor neurons in which it's under the efferent division. So the message or the signal would be coming from our brain to our body and that uh, yung movement natin will be involved here in the efferent division. Okay? But the efferent division is further divided into autonomic and somatic system. So before the autonomic system, let's review first on the somatic system. The si somatic system is uh, the part of our body involved in everything that we can control, okay? Or um, we can voluntarily move, voluntarily control. Like um, our posture, if we want to fix our posture, hindi tayo mag... Hindi tayo mag... Kung sa tawagan na? Mag... Bako. Straighten up tayo. That's somatic system since we are controlling that. Or like the blinking of our eyes. Most likely, it's on the skeletal system. We can control our movement, our posture, our gait. Again, that's somatic system. But everything that is involuntary, we cannot control it, will be under the autonomic nervous system. Just like yung heartbeat natin, hindi natin pwedeng pigilan yun siya na bukas na siya magbibit ulit. Kaya pag kumain tayo ngayon, we, we cannot stop our digestion. So again, that's auto, autonomic. Like, automatic. It will really function involuntarily. Now, dito magiging under yung ating pinag-aaralan na sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. But actually, kasali pa rin yung enteric dyan. Pero this is syempre more on the gastrointestinal tract. Uh, before we 
discuss the SIMPA and the parasimpa when it comes to the drugs, the neurotransmitters, and so on. Uh, let's just have this one. This is actually the anatomy of the autonomic nervous system. So this is still outside the brain and the spinal cord, but the outflow, the signal comes from the spinal cord. And when you say sympathetic nervous system, the signal comes from the thoracolumbar part of the spinal cord, while the parasympa, it's on the cranio and the sacral. So that's the end part of our spinal cord, both ends. Now, um, if we can still remember, the sympa and the parasympa only have two neurons. So the first one is called preganglionic, and then the second one is the, siempre the postganglionic. So they differ when it comes to the length, like the length of the preganglionic neuron for the sympa is shorter, while the parasympa is longer, and it's the other way around for the postganglionic neuron. But nevertheless, um, meron tayo mga neurotransmitters on the end part of these neurons. So just like this, the end part of the preganglionic neuron is the ganglion. So it's the junction between the two neurons in which for both sympa and parasympa nervous system, uh, acetylcholine is responsible for all the actions there. However, they differ in the neurotransmitter at the postganglionic neuron. Because we all know this, for sympathetic nervous system, we have our norepinephrine. And the, for the parasympathetic nervous system, we have the acetylcholine. So they are, siyempre, neurotransmitters. When you say neurotransmitters, they are chemical messengers um, being produced by our neurons. As compared to our hormones, which is also a chemical messenger, but hormones are produced by our endocrine cells, and then if they are go if they are produced, they will go to the bloodstream, and then they will travel all throughout the body, and that if they have interactions with their receptors all over the body, they will have this effects okay so they have broad effects yung ating hormones yung ating neurotransmitters they are be being released by the new neurons like neuro uh, norepinephrine is produced by the adrenergic neurons and then once released um in the synapse or after the synapse you can easily found uh, you can easily find the receptors so example we have the norepinephrine Meron siyang limang receptor, alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3. The four are located post-synapse. So, pagka-release niya, andyan na agad yung receptor niya. Except for the beta 2 receptor because the beta 2 receptor is found in the presynapse. Ay, not the beta 2, the alpha 2 receptor. So, yun yung introduction sa autonomic nervous system pero let's discuss them we will take a break later ha kay masigira ba akong istorya din he and then um, gumagamit ako ng aking slide pero most of the time I don't read my slides kasi so Maraming mga times class na nagadaracho derecho lang ko sa ako ang ina-istorya. And that is the very reason na kapag ka nag-discuss ako online, nag-record yun ko. Kailangan kayo ko ginainin. Ah, hindi nag-move ang aking slide. Bakit? Anyway, I'll give you a copy of this para you can review. And then, let us have a run-through of the parasimpa first. Parasimpa. Review, review lang tayo sa parasimpa. Okay, lang di mo buko kahiba mo gamit aning... And tell me if di mo kasabot magbisaya ko ha kayo. Usahay lalong ko magbisaya. Ano yun na lang ako ako ang slide kay basig di siya mag-move. Anyway... Uh, let's discuss first the parasympathetic nervous system. In our undergrad, uh, we learned na ang tawag sa kanya is rest and digest. 
the, the parasympathetic nervous system. But uh, kapag ako kasi nagsa-study ng cholinergic or ng parasympathetic nervous system, I really study acetylcholine first and then the effect of acetylcholine, the receptors, before I move on to the different drugs. And that's how I understand kung ano ba talaga ang parasympathetic nervous system. So, si parasympathetic nervous system is also called the cholinergic nervous system, mainly because our main neurotransmitter here is the acetylcholine. So, if you can still remember a while ago, I have mentioned na we have two neurons for our para and simpa, and that the neurotransmitters involved are different when it comes to the postganglionic neuron. And that is acetylcholine for the parasympathetic nervous system. So all drugs um, that mimic the actions of this acetylcholine are what we call the cholinergic agonist, or we call them cholinomimetic drugs. But nevertheless, uh, the star of the show is the acetylcholine. That is our main neurotransmitter. But we cannot just see acetylcholine in the postganglionic neuron of the parasympathetic nervous system. If you can still remember, in the ganglion of both simpa and para, ang nagogovern doon na neurotransmitter is the acetylcholine. So you can also find acetylcholine there. So it's not just about the parasympathetic nervous system. But aside from that, um, you, you can see acetylcholine in the preganglionic fibers that terminates in our adrenal medulla. And then I mentioned ko na yung sa ganglia or sa ganglion kanina, both simpa and parasimpa. And then I mentioned ko na din kanina yung postganglionic neuron, the ending of that for our parasympathetic division that is governed by acetylcholine pa rin. And then, um, sweat glands, especially the postganglionic sympathetic division of our sweat glands are being governed by acetylcholine. That's why if we're going to think of the actions of acetylcholine inside our body, basa, basa lahat, including sweating. And then aside from that, acetylcholine is involved in our somatic system because it is involved in, in the function of our muscles. So this is how we are going to produce our acetylcholine in the body. If we can still remember, our precursor here is the choline here and it needs, it's, it needs the help of sodium to enter because Basically, choline is a big molecule, so it's need a, it needs a transporter for it to enter the cell. And then inside the cell, it will interact with acetyl coenzyme A, and yes, and then na yung ating acetyl choline. And then it will be stored in the vesicle. Most of our neurotransmitters are stored in the vesicle. And then before before sila ma-release, but nevertheless, it needs the help of calcium. So it needs calcium influx first before there will be a fusion of the cell membrane and the vesicle. Tapos, pag nagkaroon na ng fusion, there will be opening of the gates. Uh, if we can still remember, we have the bumps and the snaps. They are our gates. Pag na-open na yan, there will be exocytosis. So acetylcholine will be released. Now, the fate of our released acetylcholine is, ano, meron tayong dalawang fate dito. Number one, syempre, pag na-release siya, it has now the chance to bind to the receptors. So both receptors are post-synapse when it comes to location. We have the muscarinic and the nicotinic receptors. So, dyan siya magbabind. However, we also have the enzyme acetylcholinesterase responsible to destroy this released acetylcholine. If destroyed, it will become acetate and choline. So, hindi na natin siya magagamit. It cannot interact with the receptor anymore. So, walang magiging effect yon. But, we can still utilize the choline, um, 
get it back inside the cell and we can still uh, make another acetylcholine. So, saan nag-i-interact ang ating acetylcholine? We have the muscarinic and the nicotinic receptor. Um, for our muscarinic receptor, it is called muscarinic because um, it is named from the alkaloid muscarine from mushrooms. They saw the effect there. They parehas sila ng effect sa mushroom na yun, which contains, again, the alkaloid muscarine. Parehas ng effect si acetylcholine. Doon. So, all drugs that bind to the muscarinic receptors and they are able to activate the receptor are called muscarinic agonists. And then the other receptor is called the nicotinic receptors. So, these nicotinic receptors are found in the ganglion. Yung, remember, acetylcholine is also found in the ganglion, both sympa and parasympa na division. And pwede din siyang makita sa ating skeletal muscle. So we have two types of our nicotinic receptor. The NM is the one found in the neuromuscular junction, while the NN is more on the CNS. So it's on the brain and the spinal cord, though we can also see that on the adrenal medulla and the autonomic ganglia. But eto lang kamatayang dumbbells pag sinabing acetylcholine ang isipin talaga natin basa and nung undergrad natin memorize natin yan dumbbells wala nang ibang effect yung as ating acetylcholine we only have the dumbbells so we have diarrhea that will be increased in the motility of our gastrointestinal tract and then it will also cause diaphoresis so that is excessive sweating and then there will be urination m is meiosis so that's constriction of our pupils and then there will be slowing of our heart rate and it's it can also cause bronchoconstriction e for emesis l for lacrimation and s is salivation though you can also write there sweating so john umiikot yung effect ng ating acetylcholine uh, which is very much involved in our parasympathetic nervous system. So again, all of the drugs that would act on the receptors, especially the muscarinic receptors, are called cholinergic agonist or cholinomimetics. But that is for our direct acting cholinomimetic drugs. Pag direct acting, diretso sa ating receptors. But we can also have indirect acting drugs. They will just increase the amount of acetylcholine in the body. Pero they will not have any activity on the receptors. So ito yung mga nag inhibit ng ating acetylcholinesterase. If that enzyme is inhibited, definitely mas maraming available acetylcholine that can bind to the available receptors. Okay, but before that, we have direct acting cholinergic agonist. Run through lang tayo. Siyempre, number one for that is the acetylcholine. Pag tinanong tayo ng effect, wala na tayong ibang sagot, we have the dumbbells. But aside from that, we also have betanicol, which is used for ill use, yung humihina, yung contraction of the gastrointestinal tract, especially the, the intestines. And then, the, and then we can also use this one for urinary retention. So that's betanicol. And then we also have carbocol, which has action similar to betanicol, but this is more used for glaucoma because of its meiotic effect. Okay. So, yan yung mga choline esters natin. They are direct acting muscarinic agonist. So, muscarinic receptor ito. Now, we also have direct acting muscarinic alkaloids or synthetics in the form of pilocarpine. This is from the plant pilocarpus jaborandi na ginagamit natin for glaucoma and I forgot how to pronounce this one, the Jogren syndrome. Okay, that's when a person is nauga siya tanan, like mention dry mouth, um, dry eyes, kabalik tara ng dumbbells. So if merong ganyang syndrome, we can use the pilocarpine.
So aside from that, we use that for glaucoma. Since our problem with glaucoma is increased intraocular pressure and pilocarpine and other cholinergic agonists can cause meiosis, it will actually help in decreasing the intraocular pressure just by ano, constrict yung pupil. So para yung daanan ng ating vitreous humor, medyo lumaki, magda-drop yung pressure. The synthetic one is the sevimelin. Now, for our direct-acting nicotinic agonist, we have nicotine here. Um, though nicotine don't really have a pharmaceutical use or pharmacological use, but ginagamit lang talaga siya, no, for smoking cessation. Wala talagang, like, condition na treat niya. For smoking cessation lang. Like, we have gums and nicotine patch. Kasi yun yung hinahanap ng body, di ba, pag na, nagkaroon na ng addiction. That's for direct acting nicotinic agonist. So, yun lang. Yung mga diretsyong nagbabind sa ating muscarinic and also nicotinic receptors. The remaining drugs are indirect acting na, uh, meaning their action is on the acetylcholinesterase. They will inhibit that enzyme. That enzyme, remember, is responsible in destroying the acetylcholine, the released acetylcholine. So again, once na destroy, syempre bababa yung acetylcholine na number sa ating body. So i-inhibit natin yan. Paparamihin natin yung acetylcholine sa body and that will help us achieve the dumbbells na effect. So they are divided into three groups. The first one is the simple alcohol uh, which bears a quaternary ammonium group. Ito yung nag -e sa onium. And they are considered short-acting. Short-acting or short-acting uh, na mga polynomimetics pero indirect-acting sila. And then the carbamic esters of our alcohols na meron ding quaternary or yung iba, tertiary ammonium groups, ito yung mga carbamates, they end with pigmin. So, ano sila? Intermediate acting. And then lastly, we have the organophosphates, our organic derivatives ng phosphoric acid. So, ito naman sila, yung mga short acting. So, yung mga organophosphates natin, Wala talaga silang clinical value except for ecothiophate. But nowadays, ecothiophate is no longer used. That uh, this one is used for glaucoma. But the use is now obsolete because ano nga siya, long-acting siya. So mahirap din kung merong excessive dumbbells. And then other organophosphates that we have, we have nerve gases like soman and sarin. Um, ginagamit nila as chemical substance for warfare. And then yung well-known talaga natin, our insecticides like parathion and malathion. So, ano sila ha? They will inhibit our acetylcholinesterase. The dami si acetylcholine and then that's it. There will be dumbbells. So if you're going to examine a patient exposed to an insecticide and then there is poisoning, you can really see dumbbells there in the clinical manifestation. So again, all these drugs will inhibit the acetylcholinesterase enzyme. I'll just skip this since ito yung effect ng maraming acetylcholine. So pag pagtitingnan talaga natin, dumbbells pa rin yun with the addition of the action on the central nervous system since acetylcholine is found to have an activity sa brain kasali din dito. So, itong mga drugs like Tacrine, Donipizil, and Galantamine, and Rivastigmine, they are being used for Alzheimer's disease. Because according to studies, acetylcholine is involved in memory. So, kapag uh, makulangan ka ng acetylcholine, medyo sumagsaslow down and pwedeng magkaroon ng dementia or ito, Alzheimer's disease. Okay? But nevertheless, again, run through tayo, short acting, sinabi ko kanina, yung mga nag-e-end sa onium. Like the androphonium, 
or the tensilon, di ba ginagamit natin ito, tensilon test to diagnose myasthenia gravis, which is an autoimmune disease involving acetylcholine or the production of acetylcholine in the body. So this is characterized by ptosis, yung hindi nila, wala, walang muscular contraction. So, ano, ano mangyayari doon? Like, even yung mata nila, hindi nila na open So, that is ptosis. So, paano ba ginagamit yung edrophonium? Uh, this is administered intravenously. 2 milligrams ang binibigay nila IV. And then, they will wait um, kung ma-open ba ng patient yung eyes niya. Now, like, after 5 minutes, ganun. Uh, pag na-open niya, meaning that is confirmed may ang patient merong myasthenia gravis. Pero pag hindi niya na-open yung kanyang eyes, um, hindi pa sila magda-diagnose. But they will give another 8 milligrams ng edrophonium and then they will wait again. Now, after 5 minutes, pag na-open na, myasthenia gravis pa rin yun. Pero pag hindi na-open, the patient most likely have cholinergic crisis. So, kaya kahit pa binigyan na ng edrophonium, dumami na yung acetylcholine. I mean, supposedly, dapat dumami na yung acetylcholine. Pero hindi pa rin na open. So, meaning nun, may problem talaga with acetylcholine. Kasi supposedly, pag na inhibit natin yung enzyme, na dami dapat yun. So, that is the use of our onium. Yung intermediate acting, ito yung mga pigments natin. Though we also use them for myasthenia gravis, but uh, some of them are used as antidote for atropine poisoning. Yung ginagamit natin for atropine poisoning. So, we have the neostigmine, the py pyridostigmine, and then the physostigmine, which comes from a plant. So, among them, this one is an alkaloid coming from the plant physostigma venenosum. And then we have the rivastigmine also. And then nasabi ko na yung long-acting kanina, yung ecothiophate, which was once used for glaucoma, but obsolete na yung effect niya ngayon. I mean, yung gamit niya ngayon. And then aside from that, we have malathion and parathion. So, yun yung uh, and yung mga nerve gases natin, kasali yan sila. So, ito yung mga drugs involved in the parasympathetic nervous system, pero they are all agonist. Again, meron tayong direct acting dyan, diretso sa ating muscarinic and nicotinic receptor. And then, yung indirect acting natin na nag inhibit ng acetylcholinesterase enzyme para dumami yung ating acetylcholine in the body. Okay, agonist pa lang yun. Do you have questions? Nag-review lang dyan ko din yung simpa para simpa. Okay. Naghan kay tagi na iskulahan sa pharma. Nakalimot na ang uban. Ani? Walay, walay panguta na? Uh, we'll, we will take a break in a while. Ha? Let me just have the cholinergic antagonist and then break tayo and then after the break let's have the parasympathetic nervous system pagkatapos nun um ayun dismiss na tayo okay so we have cholinergic antagonists here you may send your questions in the chat box if ever you have questions so definitely, when you say antagonist, they will just bind to the receptor, muscarinic or the nicotinic receptors, but they will not elicit any pharmacologic action. I mean, hindi sila magkukause ng dumbbells. So yan yung ating mga cholinoceptor antagonist, or we call them anti-cholinergic, especially yung mga drugs that blocks or inhibit the act, inhibit the action of acetylcholine in the muscarinic receptor. Our prototype drug here is our atropine from Atropa belladonna, though we can um, still extract this one from other plants like Natura Stramonium. In the Philippines, we have our local source of this, the Datura metal. So, yun. 
But atropine is more on a blocker of the muscarinic receptor. So anti-muscarinic talaga itong atropine. So if we're going to talk about the effects of atropine and the other drugs that will inhibit the muscarinic receptor, uh, we will just reverse the dumbbells. We will just reverse the dumbbells like M4 dumbbells is meiosis. We are going to reverse that we have the midriasis or the dilation of the pupil. Okay, so therefore, atropine is contraindicated in glaucoma. Now, in the gastrointestinal tract, remember D for dumbbells is diarrhea. There will be increase in peristalsis there. So if we are going to reverse that, there will be decrease in the motility. So reduce yung motility ng GIT and at the same time the secretion of like pepsin, yung mga gastric secretions natin will also be decreased. So tawag din natin sa mga drugs na ito anti-spasmodic, yung mga anti-cholinergics natin that, would, that will act on the gastrointestinal tract. So, si atropine, kaya din yang maging antispasmodic. And then, for the cardiovascular system, uh, at low doses, itong atropine, we are talking about atropine here, mag-cause pa rin siya ng bradycardia, but at high doses, that's the time mag-cause na ng tachycardia. Now, ito yung gusto natin when it comes to the reverse dumbbell, the bronchodilation. Since yung dumbbells kanina, B is bronchoconstriction. Ngayon, reverse natin, bronchodilation na siya. Therefore, ito mga anticholinergic agents natin can also be used for asthma and for patients na may COPD. Again, because of the bronchodilating activity. And then, this one, dyan ito urinary tract. Since you for dumbbells is urination, we are going to reverse that. Basically, we have the urinary retention. And then, S for dumbbells is sweating. So, let's reverse that one. Uh, sweating will be suppressed. And actually, if you're going to give atropine to infants or sa mga children, pwede siyang mag ng atropine fever. Again, because of the suppression of the thermoregulatory sweating. Okay? So, pwede din natin siyang ibigay for patients with hyperhidrosis. Pero, um, the relief of this excessive sweating is incomplete because apocrine gland lang yung kaya niya. Okay? Uh, and at the same time, hindi kasali yung ecrine glands dyan. Okay? For the CNS naman, um, pag normal dose, minimal na activity, na stimulant activity sa CNS, but pag ano na, uh, mataas na 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 dose, nagiging sedative na yung ating anticholinergic. So this is for the atropine actually, but this is also true for other drugs. So just like, ano pa yung mga drugs natin na mga anticholinergics, we have the scopolamine. But scopolamine is most of the time used as an anti-motion sickness drug. Meron tayong patch nito, and then at the same time for the prevention of nausea and vomiting. Now, even if we're going to look at the dumbbells, either is a messy. So if we're going to reverse that, yeah, we can also use scopolamine to prevent vomiting. Okay. So what else? Uh, we have this a lot of drugs, a lot of this in the market, the ipratropium, and actually the newer one is the tiotropium. Uh, they are the drugs, anti-cholinergic or anti-muscarinic drugs na ang action is more on the bronchioles. So there will be bronchodilation. That is why they are used for asthma and at the same time COPD. Now marami pa tayong anti-cholinergic drugs in the form of oxybutynin, trospium, darifenacin and solifenacin, tolterudine and phosphoterudine. Our imipramine, which is primarily an a tricyclic antidepressant, pero meron siyang strong na affinity on the muscarinic receptor, kaya nga lang inhibitor siya. So kasali dito si imipramine, that this one becomes its ano, side effect. 
And then we have the propiverin. Silang lahat, pare-parehas lang naman yung gamit nila. They are for urinary incontinence. Okay, so they will inhibit the urination of the patient. So, diba, let's reverse the dumbbells. Let's reverse urination. We have urinary retention. So, like, imipramin, ginagamit natin siya for enuresis, bedwetting sa ating mga bata. Pero, number one use pa rin, tricyclic antidepressant. So, yun yung mga anticholinergics natin, atropine, scopolamine, and then all the mentioned drugs para sa urinary incontinence. Muscarinic receptor yun. Iba din yung ganglionic blocking drugs. Si ganglionic blocking drugs, remember, the receptor, the major receptor in the ganglion is the nicotinic receptor. So, like, if we hear the name ganglion blocking drugs, we should think about the nicotinic receptor. So, those drugs that will block the action of acetylcholine in the nicotinic receptor, both in the parasympa and the sympathetic ganglia. Yan yun, ganglion blocking drugs. So, nandito si nicotine. Though, kanina sa mga cholinergic agonist na mention din natin si nicotine, kasi si nicotine naman talaga ang number one agonist of the nicotinic receptor. Pero kasi at high dose, nicotine can block the ganglion, the nicotinic receptor in the ganglion. So, baliktad yan sila. Pag low dose, um, it will stimulate the nicotinic receptor in the ganglion at high dose, i-block niya na. So, yan yung activity ni nicotine. But aside from nicotine, we also have tetraethyl ammonium or the T, which we don't use nowadays because this has a very short duration of action in the nicotinic receptor. But we have hexamethonium, which we use in the management of hypertension. Because remember, on high dose, there will be blockade of the ganglionic nicotinic receptor and it will result in the reduction of the blood pressure. So as you can see, we have hexamethonium here, which we use for the management of hypertension. And then we have the decamethonium, which we use as a depolarizing neuromuscular blocking agent. Later, I will uh, discuss that one. And then we have mecamilamine, which is also um, a nicotinic receptor blocker, a ganglion blocking agent. But this one is just used as an additional therapy for smoking cessation. That is just to reduce... Um, nicotine craving of the patient who wants to stop smoking. And then we have trimethophan, which is also used for hypertension. Yeah, this one is also a gang ganglion blocking agent um, used for hypertensive emergencies and dissecting aortic aneurysm. Again, all of these are blockers of the nicotinic receptors, both in the sympathetic and parasympathetic ganglia. And yung kaibahan nila sa mga nauna kong i-mention kanina, yung nauna, muscarinic yun. Ito, they are nicotinic blockers. So again, we have the following drugs for motion sickness. We have the scopolamine. And then for the gastrointestinal disorders, we have the dicyclamine or we call that dicycloverine in the Philippines. And then we have, if we may add, we have the most used one, the loperamide. Okay? Aside from we have hyoscyamine and glycopyrrolate. And then on the ophthalmology na side, we have the atropine. Um, this is just to produce midriasis for retinal examination, but we cannot use this for patients with glaucoma. On the respiratory system, we have the iprotropium and the thiotropium, which we use for asthma and COPD to produce the bronchodilating activity. For the urinary na division naman, we have drugs like oxybutynin, do marami to sila. Uh, this is more on the muscarinic receptor, so ang effect nito will be urinary retention. So para doon sa mga merong urinary incontinence. And uh, for our poisoning, poisoning natin sa acetylcholine and 
yung mga agonist ng cholinergic system, our number one antidote is the atropine. Okay? So, this is the mandatory antidote for severe, that is severe cholinesterase inhibitor poisoning. Though, uh, on the early stage of poisoning, especially those of the cholinesterase inhibitors, yung mga tigmins natin, yung onium, or even yung mga organophosphates natin, again, on the early stage of the poisoning, we can use pralidoxime, uh, which is also called a cholinesterase regenerator compound. Para ma-regenerate yung enzyme, yung acetyl cholinesterase. Okay? Kasi yun yung problema. Pag binigyan natin ng example pigmins, tapos medyo malaki yung dose, sobra-sobra from the normal one, syempre to poisoning na yun, toxicity na yun, now ma-inhibit lahat ng cholinesterase enzyme. So pwede natin silang buhayin ulit using the cholinesterase regenerator Compound. But this is only effective on the early stage of the poisoning. And yeah, we can also use atropine for mushroom poisoning. Because remember, muscarinic, it is named after the alkaloid muscarin which is found in our mushrooms. So definitely, the muscarin there has the same action with that of acetylcholine. And that's the dumbbells. So we are going to prevent that or i ano natin, antagonize that. Pero yung atropine is just effective for the rapid onset type of mushroom poisoning. It's the type wherein after eating the poisonous mushroom, after 30 to 2 hours of the ingestion, there are signs and symptoms of the toxicity. The signs and symptoms of the toxicity is just excessive dumbbells. So yun yung makikita natin sa patient. So therefore, we can still use atropine here. Pero pag delayed onset na ng mushroom poisoning, just like the one that is um, produced by eating amanita phalloides na type of mushroom, delayed onset na yun siya. So yung first signs and symptoms of the poisoning will manifest after 6 to 12 hours pa after ingestion. So ito, um, hindi na talaga siya like dumbbells na dumbbells lang. Magkakaroon na ng injury both on the liver and the kidneys. So, hindi na natin magagamit si atropine dito. So, kung example, merong kidney failure na nangyari, most likely ang patient magdadialysis na nun. So, yun yung ating mushroom poisoning. Pero, before we'll end, we'll just have a little review on the neuromuscular blocking agent. Kasi, remember, acetylcholine is also involved in our like skeletal muscle, yung pag-function yan. So, kapag uh, nagbigay tayo ng neuromuscular blocking agents, they will block the activity of acetylcholine in the muscles. So, yung mga motor nerve endings natin. And even the, the nicotinic receptors found in our muscles will be blocked. But this uh, ano, NMJ, neuromuscular uh, blocking agents natin are divided into two. We have the non-depolarizing and the depolarizing ones. Yung totoong blockers are the non-depolarizing However, yung depolarizing are actually considered agonist. So yung mga non-depolarizing natin, ito yung mga nag-e-end sa curonium, like the curonium, rocuronium, pancuronium, the atracurium, and the cis-atracurium are also included here. Though we have alkaloids like tubocurarin, and then we have the curare, Again, under the non-depolarizing agent. So, if we're going to use these drugs, they will block acetylcholine from its interaction at the nicotinic receptor. Though, if we want to reverse the action, we will just give the neostigmine. So, yung makikita natin itong mga drugs na ito, most likely sa hospital, they're being used by anesthesiologists to shorten the duration and monitor the extent of the neuromuscular blockade. And this will help them actually reduce the amount of anesthesia to be used for the patient before 
the surgery kasi nakarelax na yung muscle. Narelax na nga kasi ininhibit natin yung activity ni acetyl. Pauline. However, our problem if pag masobrahan na, aside from the blockade of the acetylcholine, these drugs will also block the ion channel sa motor and plates natin sa ating mga muscles. And this cannot be longer reversed by our cholinesterase inhibitors. So ang problema natin, since there is a complete blockade, our muscles will not be able to respond anymore to any electrical stimulus mahihirapan tayo nun. So, ito yung sequence ng paralysis of the muscles. Pag binigay na natin yung non-depolarizing agent, it will start with a small uh, rapidly contracting muscles like yung mga muscles natin sa mukha followed by sa body natin. And then the last the last one that will be paralyzed is the diaphragm. Pero pag nag-recover na yung patient natin, like after the surgery, baliktad na siya. The first one to recover is the diaphragm. The last one will be those small contracting muscles natin. Okay? Yung problema lang natin with this, uh, meron tayong like effect in the heart rate, like the pancuronium. Kaya mahirap kapag ka ang patient merong problem sa heart. So, ito yung mga drug interactions niya nila na mga drugs na ito. Um, depende sa drug na yan. May, may mga drugs dito that will um, enhance the activity of the neuromuscular blocking agents. Example, we have the calcium channel blockers. Binak na nga natin yung acetylcholine. Ibablock pa natin yung calcium which is also helpful in the muscle contraction. So, doble na yon talagang magre-relax na talaga ang muscles after that. So, yan yun. Yung cholinesterase inhibitors, ginagamit natin as antidote, especially if low dose lang naman yung ginamit natin. And then lastly, we have the depolarizing agent. We only have one drug here, the succinylcholine. So, this one is considered agonist talaga siya. Kasi... Ano yung mangyayari pag gagamitin natin si succinylcholine? It will bind to the nicotinic receptor and it will act just like the acetylcholine. Kaya again, tinawag talaga siyang agonist. So kapag ka nag-bind siya sa receptor, ng I mean, nagka-bind na siya sa nicotinic receptor, um, ma-open yung sodium channel. Remember na mention ko si nicotinic receptor kanina sa class 1 na type of receptor na ionotropic siya. So, ma-open si sodium, tapos papasok si sodium, there will be depolarization, so meaning magiging more positive ang inside ng cell, and that will excite the cell. And that will explain why on the first phase after giving the succinylcholine, the patient will experience muscle twitching or muscle uh, fasciculation. Pero pag na-reach na yung phase 2 after na after ang depolarization, magre-repolarization pa rin naman siya. So the inside of this cell will become uh, will become more negative after and that's the time the patient will experience paralysis. So kaya tinawag pa rin siyang neuromuscular blocking agent. So magre-relax pa rin siya ng muscle. So again, yung first part, there will be fasciculation or muscle twitching before there will be paralysis. Okay, so we have extreme short duration of action of our succinylcholine because of the presence of the enzyme in our body called pseudocholinesterase that will degrade this drug. So mawawala yung kanyang activity. So kailan natin gagamitin si succinylcholine? For example, we have here the endotracheal intubation like during emergency cases to relax the muscles here para mapasok yung tube. That's the time we use our succinylcholine. Ang problema natin with this one is pwede siyang mag-cause ng malignant hyperthermia. So sa undergrad natin, meron tayong antidote neto and that is the dantrolin. Okay, so that's the end of the anticholinergics. Anticholinergics, we have the first part here, anti-muscarinic, meaning sa muscarinic receptor sila mag-inhibit. We have atropine, the scopolamine, and yung mga drugs for urinary incontinence. And then pag sinabing ganglion blocking drugs, we are talking about the nicotine. 
receptors here. So these are the drugs here again. Hexamethonium, decamethonium, mecamilamine, trimethaphan. And included in our nicotinic blockers, yung tinatawag nating neuromuscular blocking agents. So they are more used by the anesthesiologist. So I think that's it. We will have a break first. And then after that, uh, we will have our adrenergic nervous system. Kung saan lang yung matapos ko. Pag hindi ko siya natapos ngayon, uh, we will continue next meeting. And then we will move on with our reporting. Questions before we'll have our break? How do I stop this? Oh, this one. Stop recording. <laughs>